climbing up the stairs on this side. Uh, that's what I said.
The Lord be with you. Thank you and welcome to worship this morning. A few announcements as we begin. Pastor Gail is wrapping up her vacation. She'll be in the office this week. So if anybody needs to see her or talk to her, she'll be here. We hope that that vacation has been what she has needed it to be this last week. Warren Village Easter basket money is due by next Sunday. So if you're participating in that mission and ministry and that's a gift you wanna make, then please do that before, well, by next Sunday. That would be amazing. There is a link um, in the Sunday announcement page if you'd like to hear more about the amazing work that Warren Village does in the community. And then you're invited on Wednesday evening to soup supper and evening prayer. It is a pretty brief and meaningful time together. So we invite you to come back on Wednesday and be a part of that with us. And now I invite you to stand and greet one another as we begin. I invite you to remain standing as we speak a word of confession and hear a word of God's good forgiveness this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us by steadfast promises. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, We confess that we are caught in sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources that everyone needs. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. In a flood of promised grace and out of love for the whole world, your sins are forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from hopelessness. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of the world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those, who, but those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
I, enjoyed the, I invite the other children to come up with us for a minute. Good morning. How are you guys? That's always a little bit of exercise for you guys to get up here, isn't it? Yeah. So we're talking about baptism. We've been talking about baptism. We've been talking about the promises your parents make for you in baptism and the promises that all these people make when they join a congregation like this one. It's called an affirmation of baptism. It's a big word. It means yes. Affirmation of baptize, yes. That's what affirmation means. 
Yeah, Mary. Um, my sister is going to get baptized soon. Yes, your sister's going to get baptized next week, right? Next Sunday. She has a, yeah. she has a dress for that. A special dress? Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. 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 Mimi might have given her the special dress. Okay, well, you can check that later, too. We'll check in next week and find out. So baptism, really exciting. Oh, yes, Matthias. Sometimes my, my brother just died. Really? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. He, got, he got two fang marks from a big dire snake. Oh, there was a Minecraft death. Okay. Well, gaming, you know. Being a gamer, you have to talk about these things too. They're important. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna get back on track. So here's the question: When you guys are baptized, um, do you all? Do you, this is maybe it's a trick question. I don't know. Do you become like everybody else when you're baptized? No. no. No, God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves the special ways that you're. Hold on, just one second, Marian. Yeah. What's that? I heard some. Friends, right, we're all different, right? Does everybody sing in the choir? No. Do some of us have the gift of song and some of us have other gifts? Yes. So we all have all these different gifts. Do we, can we all do all the things that Jesus asks us to do? No. Can you guys do all the things that Jesus asks you to do all the time? No, no. But can some of us And most of us, and maybe all of us, do some of the things some of the time? Yes. So things like, yes, Marion? God loves everybody. God loves everybody. That's right. We could just go home, right? Like, like that is right. God loves everybody. And that is the main thing, isn't it? That is the main thing. Hold on. Let's find out what Raina wants to say, too, okay? God loves friends. You must have some good friends to be thinking about them today. So all the things that make us special, whether we know how to make video games or play video games, play with friends on video games, sing with our friends in the choir, work on can ministry, design things, build things, be kind to people. Sometimes I think that's something that we could all work on, but some of us are just much better at it than other people. So I just wanna celebrate all the ways we're different today, all the ways that God receives us and loves us in baptism, and the way we get to celebrate being different from each other today, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for baptism. Thank you for loving us, no matter what, and for making us different so that all of us can do some of the things. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us first. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Some of these little ones have really long walks and and little legs back to their seats. You know, the thing I don't like about Jesus is that he was always telling his followers to get revenge, to trash talk, to really stick it to people as much as possible. He was super mean all the time and he hated weddings and children really got under his skin. So I'm going to stop there on the off chance that anybody thinks I'm serious about any of that. Obviously, Jesus was none of those things. The stories we have about Jesus and the things he said reveal an incredible human 
Non-Christians say how great life would be on this planet if Christians actually lived like Jesus lived. Many people who aren't Christians try to live their lives as Jesus lived his life. Just as those of us who say we follow Jesus try to follow his example. When we welcome new members into Lutheran churches like this one, we call it an affirmation of baptism. It doesn't say that in the bulletin necessarily, but that's what it is. People are saying yes again to the call of their baptism in the new congregation. There are promises we make as part of the affirmation of baptism when we join a church. In the last few weeks, we've covered a few of those promises to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim Christ, to proclaim God in Christ through word and deed. And today, we're highlighting our promise to serve all people following the example of Jesus. Our Bible readings today help us remember a very important part of that promise. Jesus is Jesus, and we are not. I know that's a tough one. Jesus is Jesus, and we are not, even if we are called to follow his example. Verse 17 of the John reading takes that one step further. If Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, then why would any Jesus follower think that condemning the world is their job? I shared at evening prayer last Wednesday that I was raised in two denominations that painted painted the scariest portrait of God that you could imagine. And that God sent Jesus to police the planet for every misdeed, the most minor to the most evil, And when I left home, I left Jesus behind. Why take him to the party if he was just going to be a downer anyway? And then I married a Lutheran Christian. We baptized our babies and made the promises to them that you hear me ask parents and that those adults who are baptized make at the baptismal font. So what changed? God didn't. I did. John 3, 16 and 17 were written as continuous thought in the original Greek. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Greek just all moves together there. God's love for the world revealed in Jesus is good news because it reveals God's goodness and God's light. Jesus was not sent to condemn the world, but to save it. Here's where it might get a little tricky, so hang with me. Salvation in John's gospel is focused on life. Eternal life today because God is eternal. And God abides with us right now, here in this room, as we abide with God right now. How would it change Jesus' message for you to think about salvation that way, rather than in this dividing line at the time of death? Why would a God whose love for the world, who draws all people to God, suddenly turn against people when they die? Have we projected our own fear of dying onto God? These questions are relevant to today's reading because people have used verse 16 over the centuries and now a couple millennia to blast people beyond God's love. It's what happens when verse 16 is disconnected from verse 17. It's what happens when belief is set as the highest power above even God's grace. As if the power of God's grace could be limited by our beliefs and our doubts which is, of course, ludicrous that our belief could be more powerful than God's grace. In case we think too highly of our own power, we hear this reminder from Ephesians this morning. For by grace you have been saved, through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Faith as a gift from God by definition means that belief 
cannot be a work. We don't dredge belief and faith up in ourselves. That's a real mind bender, I think, for many people. We don't create faith. We haven't focused on the Hebrew Bible stories of the Old Testament much over the last few weeks. Those readings in worship have emphasized the covenant that God makes to God's people. And each covenant that God made is evidence that the promise to some was for the benefit of many. From God's covenant with Abraham would come a blessing for the whole world. From God's covenant with the Hebrews led by Moses would come life-giving commandments that brought peace among neighbors. And from God's covenant with the whole world through Jesus would come a love so powerful that it has the power to transform hearts and minds. Which brings us back to the baptismal promise we make to serve all people following the example of Jesus. We don't make this promise to serve in order to grow the church, to win souls for God, or to prove how cool our theology is. We serve following the example of Jesus because as the Ephesians reading tells us, we are what he has created us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. I'd like you to think for a minute about the people who have served you like you imagine Jesus served people in the Bible stories. Call to mind names and faces and what happened. It may be someone who prayed for you. It may be someone who healed you like a chiropractor or a physician or a counselor. It may be someone who didn't let a past harm define you. It may be someone who had more grace for your flaws than you could ever could for yourself and did not condemn you. It may be someone who stayed up with you late at night talking when you needed it the most. It may be someone who fed you when you had no way to pay for it yourself. As I prepared this sermon, so many faces and names swam through my mind of people who have been Jesus for me in my life. Most recently, it was my friend, Lee McNeil. Lee and I worked on human dignity policies and legislation with Together Colorado, especially related to race and justice. I called her Sister Lee, as did many others who knew her. It was an honorary title of respect for a beloved and wise elder. And she, as the great-granddaughter of an enslaved person, and I, as the triple great-granddaughter of someone who owned African people, our friendship evolved over 10 years of working together. A few weeks ago, she and I were asked to write an opinion piece supporting the racial equity study bill moving through the Colorado legislature that will increase our understanding in the state of the generational impact of law and policy on black Coloradans. Sister Lee and I wrote it here in my office at the church. First, we reminisced about people we know and catching, getting up to date with each other because we haven't talked for well over a year. And then we kept right on talking while I typed and read out loud and we talked and edited and I typed. And at the end of our conversation that day, I told her how grateful I am for our friendship and for her grace while I learned things that I could never have learned by myself and her willingness to just talk. And we hugged and she told me she loved me and I told her I loved her back. And afterwards, there was a flurry of emails. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Flurry of emails back and forth as we got that editing a little bit tighter and I submitted our letter to the paper. And a week later, I found out that Lee died suddenly. A long, long life and a life well lived. And I was stunned and I was heartbroken and incredibly grateful to know her and unbelievably grateful to have seen her right before she died. Sister Lee was kind and thoughtful and fierce and beautiful. She loved Jesus and she served people 
following the example of Jesus. I have watched many of you over the years serve each other similarly. Oh sure, there are disappointments and disagreements and sometimes frayed nerves. We are human after all. But we're reminded time and again how much God loves us. And we're reminded that Jesus commanded us to love each other and then he showed us how to do it. The list of things that Jesus did for people is really long. If there's not someone coming to mind at the moment who has been Jesus for you, take this question out of worship with you today and think about that. Who has been Jesus for you? Who has served you as Jesus served and in some small way helped you understand just how much God must love you? Because that's what our service to other people does. It reminds them that God loves them too. And this reminder, this reminder of how much God loves us is desperately needed in a world that is louder. It's so often so much louder than these messages of love we give each other. Thanks be to God and amen. We join our voices with people of faith in all times and in all places. Together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With all the people of God, we join in prayer for the church, for the world and all creation, for those in need, and for the community gathered in this place. God of love, we pray for your holy church as it continues its Lenten pilgrimage. 
Give to us all a renewed spirit of contemplation, repentance, and humility as we follow the path to Calvary and then to the empty tomb. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, the whole world is yours, the sea, the land, and all your creatures. Renew in us the spirit of stewardship for your creation so that we may work to renew the earth and preserve it, protect it for future generations. Hear us, O God. God of love, we lift up before you all those who are easy to forget, those who suffer want and lack of work, those who are homeless, sick, isolated, and oppressed. In these times, we particularly pray for the care of immigrants, refugees, those experiencing homelessness, and those driven from their homes by conflict around the world. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, we give thanks for all of those gathered in this place. Bless our fellowships and service and work. Hear our prayers today for those in need of health and healing. Penny and Larry, Alida, Sue, Ashley, and for all those we name in our hearts before you. We pray for the consolation of the family and friends of those who have died. Jeff Churchill, Joyce Olson, and also for those we name in our hearts. We rejoice in the baptism of Catherine Alice Gentis with parents Megan and Michael. In this season of preparation, give us renewed gratitude for the gift of our own baptisms. May we live into the baptismal promise to serve all people following the example of Jesus. Hear us, O God. God of love, we commend to you everyone for whom we pray. And in your wisdom, grant us those things that you know we need. For the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And please take a moment to share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts we freely give so that all people may know your goodness. Feed us with this heavenly food and with your kindness, justice, and humility. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mighty and merciful Lord, in your great love for the world, you sent Jesus, the beloved, who reached out in hope and healing, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus is the host of this meal. You are here in the sanctuary or worshiping on live stream, and you are welcome to Holy Communion. On live stream, we invite you to have bread and, or cracker and wine or juice and to receive them with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Here in the sanctuary, the ushers will guide you forward up the center aisle. You'll receive a piece of bread, all of which is gluten-free. And then you'll have your choice of wine or grape juice in little cups. The grape juice is light-colored, if that is your preference. And you can return the little cups into the baskets on the altar rail as you move back to your seats. All are welcome at Holy Communion. You are here and you are welcome. If for reasons of your own, you would rather receive a blessing instead of communion, just cross your arms when you come up and I'll know to give you a blessing instead. And now we sing the Lamb of God together.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of Christ Jesus our Lord strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Generous God, at this table, you give us a feast of immeasurable grace and gather us by your promises for the sake of the world. Send us forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, may God shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, sustained by God's promises. Thanks be to God.